Hi everybody, Jo here again. Welcome back to another video tutorial. I hope you've had a good couple of days and I hope you're really enjoying this extravaganza. I have to say, such a fabulous idea from Tracy. Um, and, and it's great because we can all get together and share a bit of crafty fun. Fabulous tutorials by the rest of the design team. I must admit, I'm so thrilled to be a member. So thank you, Tracy, for that. What I thought I'd do today is, if you remember, the other day we started creating our lovely little magical book here. And the finished one here is just held together with a piece. So it's just made out of a piece of black card. And we went through this the other day. So if you didn't follow this, maybe just pop back and look at the other tutorial. I've just used a piece of string here. It's sort of black elastic and this gorgeous little bottle. I couldn't resist using one of these. In it, I've added some of my Eco, the glitters. And this one is Purple Delight. And I thought that went really well with the theme. Now, that idea I got from my lovely friend, Anne Redfern, and it's a great way, thank you, Anne, of holding one of these little books together. Now, inside, if you remember, we've got some ATCs here. And ATCs are just pieces of card, again, with a design, three and a half inches by two and a half inches. And what we did the other day, we created the base and a front and a back. So if I just bring in the one that we actually did. So this is what we created. So we put it together and we created the front and back. And I've sprayed those with a, um, a spray varnish and I've glued them in place. Now, again, I'm going to add some embellishments. So such as a nice little clip. I love these. Um, but I would suggest keeping the back flat and then at least you can pop your book down. One thing I have done is just stamped my lovely um, sacred spells. And again, I've got an arrow on the back of mine, so I know it's the right way up. Now this I stamped in my sticky ink pad. So that's my Versamark ink pad. And what I've done is just lightly brushed some of my mica minerals over the top. And this one's silver pearl just to give it that nice sort of magical sort of glisten and it's just a nice easy way of just covering a background Sorry, I don't know that one. you have to excuse my friend i can't say her name if i do she might start talking to me even more so what i've also done is created a little pocket here just added a piece of card and i'm thinking that might be nice to put either um, a note in or say you wanted to give this to somebody, a gift card, a cheque, some cash. And you could turn it into a nice little, oh, what about making one of these for Christmas? I think that would be a lovely idea. So we've got to that stage. And what we're going to do today is just create a couple of ATCs to go inside. So I'll probably just make three today. Give you the idea, get you started. And obviously for homework, you can make the rest and fill them in and finish your book. And what we'll do, pop that to one side. So I've already, I tend to cut, so I've got three ATCs here. I cut a, a pile of these in one go. And what we'll do, we'll start off by some stamping. Now I'm not quite sure which three we'll create. Depends how my head's working on the day. But let's come in with, I do love this cauldron. Again, Halloween, we need a bit of a cauldron, don't we? So I'm going to use my black, my black ink, and I think we'll have this down here on this one. And let's go for, just mix it up a bit, put it to the side on this one. Got so many lovely, lovely stamps. I'm stuck between which one to use, but I'm really into this small swing stamp at the minute. So we'll use this one as well. Now, again, it's up to you. You can create your ATCs, your toppers, one at a time, or you can make two or three together. It really depends on how you're feeling on the day. I think because these are such small pieces of artwork, it's so nice that we don't feel we have to do 
a, a huge big piece that's daunting if we're say having a, a bad day with our mojo or we're feeling a bit off color these are perfect size cards to work on now the way I work is I like to do my stamping first. If you're somebody who likes to create your background first, well, you could just spend a day and create some backgrounds. As I say, we all work in different ways. And we just go with however we're feeling. Now I'm thinking, let's add the crow. Now I can't remember, this is where my acetate comes in. I can't remember. Which crow did I use? Oh, we'll go for him. Or should we go for... No, I quite like him. And again, I do talk to myself. Do you do the same? Like I say, when I looked through my stamps, I was like, oh, got a huge pile and I was just... Coming up with so many designs. So again, I just want to get my damp cloth and I've just caught the edge. Now do excuse my head because I do need to just pop him there. And again, he's a silhouette, so I'll just give him a, a minute to for that ink to soak in. And again, I'm just using a magazine and a piece of copy paper because that works well for me. But again, you use whatever strategy, whatever helps your stamping. Right, now let's have a look. Have we got... Ah, uh, yes, we have. Thinking a gorgeous dragon coming out of. Now, again, you can use your acetate. Now, obviously, if I do the dragon here, it's going to be off the page. So I'm thinking dragon there and we'll just do a little bit of masking the tail. You'd be amazed, even though it's such a small area, what stamps you can use. You know, you don't have to just go for sort of the small pan stamps. Because again, remember, you don't have to use the whole of each stamp. So I'm just going to clean round my dragon. And then put a piece of copy paper. And I can see through my copy paper. So I know that's the top of my cauldron. And let's have the dragon so just popping out there and again another silhouette so just give that ink time to soak in don't be in a rush to lift your image up and again remember these lovely slim blocks And there we go, it looks like he's coming out, which is exactly what I wanted. So I like those two. So what should we have here? Let me have a look. Like I say, I'm just having a, a good old... Let's go, where's the, the fairy web? I love this fairy web. And again, I don't get that much chance to use it, so I'm thinking, perfect. And that will just have that in that corner. And then we need our little, what did we call him? Sydney spider, is it? And let's put him so he's just above. So he's thinking, hmm, is he backtracking? Is he thinking, am I going in that cauldron? So I've got my three. And again, that's what I tend to do, sort of come up with the designs. And I'm just going to 
just blot those again because I've used a, a Versafine clay so it's your slower drying ink and like I say it's up to you if you want to do one from start to finish I'm just going to do three together because for me using my inks um I think it'll work well that way so my element ink pads I've chosen four colors and that's what I'm working with for all my designs I don't want to bring in any other colours. I want to stick to these four because I think it'll give um, continuity through all of my, my toppers. And I've gone for Sundance, Paprika, Merlot and Graphite. Graphite and Merlot have been tending to use round the edges. Now what I'm thinking is we can use stenciling in the background as well. So let's go with, which one shall we? What I'm thinking is, you see, because I do change my mind as I'm going, charming this lovely stencil almost looks like flames and i'm thinking that goes well with the dragon so what i'm going to do i'm just going to take the lids off my ink pads and i'm going to come in with the yellow i'm just going to dab it off on my mat I'm just going to lightly, and it, I can see where my um, stamping is, so I'm just going round. If I want to see how it looks, there we go, that's nice, I don't want too much. And then in with my orange again, dab it off on my mat, and I just want to catch just this sort of area. Let's have a look, oh that adds a nice, yep, don't want any more, that adds a really nice fiery. Now what I am going to do is grab myself another ATC, my water spritzer bottle and where we've inked through the stencil just going to get that free background now I have done that on one of my so when I was creating my book I used the leaf stencil here and I know it's not called leaf stencil let me look up what it's called flurry and I used the flurry stencil for the background here behind my cat. But then I made a spare background here, which I then later stamped up. So obviously it's so good to do this because this gives you the extra background. Now just give it a couple of seconds to, oh look at that, yeah. And again, I think this will work so well with the cauldron, the dragons. So when that dries, that's my spare background for my homework. So we'll put that to one side. And I'll just wipe that up where I spritzed my water. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So that's my stenciling in there. So I'm happy with that. I want to add a little bit of the yellow. And again, I'm just going to stick with my colours to start off with. And I'm just going to lightly add just very lightly, light touches, and add some yellow. And then I'm going to come in, pick some orange off my mat, and just go around. I need to be mindful, don't I? I nearly forgot to use my kitchen paper. And let's add some orange around here. I'll just add a bit more. I'll follow that shape round a bit deeper at the bottom. And again, these blenders, you just build up the colour and come back in with the yellow. And then we're almost highlighting, adding nice highlights there, aren't we? So we'll put that to one side. And then let's have a look at our cauldron. Now again, here we've got so many possibilities. Let's add some yellow around the cauldron. And I'm not going to come in with the orange this time because I don't want them to be identical. So I'm just going to put my lids on a minute. So I'm going to come in with the Merlot. Now again, this is quite a deep colour. I'm going to blend this. Again, always taking it off on my mat. 
I don't want the colours to be identical, you see. I want these to, although we've used different stamps, I want the backgrounds to be slightly different as well. Just keeps the interest in your, in your book. Now that yellow wants to be a bit brighter, doesn't it? So we'll pop back in the yellow. And we can go back in. Yeah, let's have that nice fiery yellow there. And while we've got our Merlot, we can come in and edge this one. You can see the way my head works, can't you? And I'm just going to go all the way around. And if you notice, I try and ink up on the corners just because I always want my corners darker. Now, I don't want to bring that colour too far in because I want to keep that. I really like that. I'm going to put the lid on the Merlot and the only reason I spend time actually putting the lids on is so that I don't pick, put my blender in the wrong ink by mistake. And now I'm going to come in and with my mask, now I'm going to come in with my landscape mask first. And I put it to one side ready. Now you know what happens with things we put to one side ready, don't you? Oh, there it is. I thought the fairies then had magically made it disappear. So I'm on with the graphite now and I'm just going to ground my cauldron just to add a bit of atmosphere. And then I'm going to blend my ink all the way around. I'm not going to come in as far. I don't want it in as far as the purple but I just want it to frame the whole design. And what I'm going to do again for that continuity of design, all these three ATCs are going to have the graphite round the edge. So that's the blending for that one. We'll come into this one now. And again, I'm going to use my landscape mask and just ground my cauldron again if you're not sure of your colour lift your mask up and have a look just pop it up like that look it's flexible have a look but I'm happy with that now what I could do is add a moon mask to this one and this is one of those lovely things where you'll find you'll literally each design it's nice to just add something a bit different as i say we want continuity but we also want each piece to be a little piece of art on its own so i think oh there we don't want it there just so it catches the spider and a bit of the spider's web now again i'm going to take some of the graphite off on my mat and then just flick gently flick around and I don't want this too strong but I just want enough there we go how nice is that so just go all the way around again inking up on the corners whiz down the sides along the bottom and then up this side because I'm not going in too far if you want it to look a bit more moody, see we need a bit more on the top there, don't we? Just a little bit more, darker on those corners. There we go. And already that started to look nice and sort of mean and moody. We do need to attach our spider. So just with a, a fine liner, just going to give him his little thread there. So he's hanging. And then on to number three. So here we need some nice edging don't we so again start on the corners and all the way round and I do love the way these colours work together so dramatic sort of gives me that feel of I think with this sort of orangey colour I'm thinking pumpkins and then you've got the grey and the purple so it's all mystical and they just blend so well now what I am going to do is I want to add a little bit 
of colour. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sun dance on my mat while I'm using this. Before I clean up these inks, add a little bit of water and I'm just going to paint a little bit of yellow on my cauldron. Just think a little bit of highlight on there. And the same with this, it'll just take that colour down. Now, I want to add some of my micas, so I'm just going to clean this up because that's just the way my head works. I have to keep it a clean area. I mean, obviously at home, I would just carry on and make um, my next set of these and clean up at the end. But obviously you don't want to be with me all day, do you? Although I have to say, it would be nice to have your company all day. And I'm thinking, let's add some. We want to go for that mic, that sparkle like we did on the cover. So if we just add... And where's my wooden? Oh, there we go. My little measuring tool. We'll just add a little bit onto my mat. And I have to say, these mica minerals just last so long. And with my paintbrush again, and this is number one, I feel for the others because at the minute, number one's definitely my favourite. And I'm just going to come in and I want a little bit of highlight. But also on here, I want some sparkle. And a little bit, I'm just going to catch this. Now again, on my spider's web. Now you could use, if you haven't got mica minerals, you could use your, your silver Signo pen for this. I just love the sparkle that the minerals give me. And I try to use my products as much as possible. And we'll just put a little bit on this thread here. A little bit. And I'm just going to add some little sparkly bits here. And then these two I'm going to flick at the same time. Now you could fold bleach and flick water. I just think that my mica minerals gives it that more that mystical sort of feel. And I love the way it catches the light. And I'm just going to bring my chalk pastel pencil just to highlight. I don't want to highlight much. Just to give the idea of some highlight on there. And again, just odd little bits. And let's just clean that up. And the last thing, which I should have done before, I've got to be honest, which I've nearly forgotten to do, is adding my sacred spell stamp in. Now, to be honest, you would be better doing this before you do your flicks. But I was getting so carried away with my design, I completely forgot. And um, that is just a little bit of, I want to add my lovely sacred spell stamp just in the background of all my design. Again, just for that continuity. So I'm using the grey, it's the morning mist. And I'm going to keep my stamp off the ink pad. And I'm going to use second generation and I don't want a lot just want to catch little bits. So I think there and there, I didn't want to go across there. That's enough on that one. Now here, I'm thinking here. And because I'm not using a block, I can sort of angle the stamp and just catch a little bit. Look, it's a lovely way of doing this. 
and it almost remember if you use your second generation it just knocks it back and takes it into the background for, so for example on this one i've still got my stenciling and you can still see the stenciling you don't want the wording to overpower you just want it to be in the background and just add as i say that continuity and the morning mist if you haven't got it is a fabulous color for that now that cauldron looks like it needs a bit of something extra to me. So let me just come in with my signal, the gold. It just didn't look magical enough. I don't know about you, but I think it just needed. That's better. I'll add a bit on this one as well. And then the final thing for me is just getting my white pasta. And again, I would do all three at once. And I know not everybody likes the white Posca. So if you don't like the white Posca, obviously you don't do that bit. And I'm just going to take these off here so you can see. And you finish your, the cards off if you want to add a sentiment to each, if you want to spell um a sentiment out as you're going through that would be lovely and what i'm going to do when they're dry i shall attach those in my little book now as for the little it's up to you i again added some posca splats to my book and just a little bit of Posca pen to my embellishments. But that is totally up to you. I'll leave one with and one without. So again, you can decide. I mean, again, you don't have to do the same on all of them. So I'm going to leave you with that now. So I'm hoping that's given you some inspiration. And that you're going to create some lovely ATCs. And hopefully, maybe even a nice little... Look at this, I can't fit them all on, can I? A nice little story book as well, or a book of spells. Or maybe you have Halloween recipes. You could create a recipe book. Do you know what? There are so many things you could do. Oh, and my little pumpkin, my little urchin. So he's a little embellishment. I just need to glue him on the front as well. They're the bits I like best. The playing. I love to just add extra bits and extra bits. So you take care, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this extravaganza. We always love to hear your feedback. You take care. Have a good week ahead. Love and hugs to everybody. Bye for now.